God's word. The very thing that he's trying to train and build up the church. Amen. And when you're called for such position, you know, to be his representative, you know, you really have to take, take a moment and really pause for a second and to really actualize what he's trying to do Amen. in your life yeah. and how he's using you because you're the vessel and the, his spirit is in you to touch others. Amen. You know, yesterday I was pretty much exhausted and I attempted to sit to go over the message again. But feeling such a fatigue didn't allow me to do so, so I went to sleep. And then I woke up about 6 a.m. in the morning, this morning, and I went back. And I sit and took over the message once more time again. And as I was sitting there, you know, there was just like little bits and pieces. You know, like when you go into the well and you're trying to draw up water and you put your bucket up. Amen. You pull up the first time, you know, you get a portion of the water. And you got to lower the bucket even lower to get a full bucket. So it's like every time you go to him, it's, you, he takes you a bit deeper. Amen. Deeper, you know. And I was so thankful and grateful, you know, um, for Pastor Chow because um, we <clears throat> went over this message on Good Friday in the evening, you know. And I couldn't really connect at that time fully with Interred because to my degree, to how I felt, it's like, okay, I will be too distracted, I couldn't focus. But I was just so thankful that I had that time this morning for him to refresh me all over again. Amen. And today our message is based upon four areas. The first part is that Jesus prophesied his death. Amen. And he gave a revelation of the state of the church to help where they are. The second part is his resurrection, when he was resurrected. And the third part is the testimony of John. Amen. And then the last part of it is the, um, this is when he, his appearance, you know, um, his 40 days appearance on the earth after he had resurrected, and also how he did reprove the disciple for their lack of faith and belief, and also he sent them out. Amen. Amen. But first, we are going to look at the first part, which is his prophecy, when he was prophesied in his death, and the revelation of the state of the church. So we're going to go into Mark chapter 14, verse 27 to 28. I guess we don't have these. Do we have these already? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Mark chapter 14, from verse 27 to 28. And it says, And Jesus said to them, You will fall away this night. That is, you will be caused to stumble and will begin to distrust and desert me. Mm. So, Christ already knew that the hour was approaching him, whereby the chief priest and all the Roman soldier is coming after him mm -hmm. to arrest him. Amen? So in order that he can be put to death. But we also need to remember from the Good Friday message, the scripture that I quoted was in John chapter 6 verse 38 says that it is the will Amen. and the purpose of God for this to unfold and happen. Because the ultimate goal was so we all can be saved and to have that everlasting life and to live out the new life in the in the Holy Spirit, Amen. which is the resurrected life. Amen. So Christ already knew this was going to happen, and he had his body, which is his church, because his disciples they represent the church, right? He had his body with him, and he turned to them and he said, This very night all of you will fall away. You will desert me. Amen. Now, at that very time, he is announcing something. Uh -huh. So when he is announcing something now, now, as you as being his body, so when, whenever he, if you notice how the Bible is, and when he said, thus say the Lord, 
Amen. or God said, which means I am announcing something that is going to happen and it will come to pass. Amen. So his body is there and they don't have a clue to what he's saying. Right? Because they do not know the hour was already upon him even though he had mentioned it to them before. Amen? Amen? And he said that you will distrust so all they trust and all they believe that they had in him before, it was going to fail away. This is the time when the true test would have come if they would remain in him and abide in him or they will fall away. Amen? He said, you will distrust and you will desert me. In other words, you will say, I don't know do you anymore. Amen? For it stands written... I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. So we all know that if shepherds, when they have a flock of sheep, right, they control the sheep, right? They are the leader, right? They keep them safe, they protect them, they guide them. But when you remove the shepherd from the flock, what happens to the sheep? They all started to divert. Amen. And go they separate ways. Go astray. Yes, they go astray. And if you go back to Isaiah 53 and verse 6 says, I'm just going to read that scripture. I'm not going to read the whole thing. So verse 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. Amen. Because now the shepherd will be struck. Right? So God, so Christ himself, at the time the Lord Jesus Christ, will be taken away out of, from out of the flock. And what's going to happen to the flock now? They will go astray, and we have turned everyone to his own way. Amen. So, that, so God, he prophesied it. He said, I am going to die, and you all will scatter. You all will become like little stray puppies. Amen? And 28 says, but after, now this is very important. He said, Amen. but after I am raised to life, I will go before you into Galilee. Amen. Now, the Lord is saying this very thing to his body, to his church, to his disciple. And for some reason, no one grasps what he said in verse 28. It's either they heard, heard it, but they didn't listen. Because you can speak to someone, but none of them say that they're listening to you. Because if you ask them to recall what you have said, they can't. Yeah. So the Lord told, tell them this. It's not that he has not spoken this to him. He said, I will, after this, I will raise the light and I will go before you to Galilee. Mm -hmm. So he had already pronounced, he already declared this. Now, let's move in to the resurrection of Jesus. And we will see the importance of that same verse 28 to what is going to unfold now. Mm -hmm. So in Mark chapter 16... From verse 1 to 11. Amen? You know, Nikki, just to, to be, um, encourage us in this area, thank you for um, you know, expounding in that area. You can see, this is why the scripture said, as you quote in, in Matthew 53, um, Isaiah 53, verse 6, mm -hmm. you know, all of us, will, all of us have gone astray. Amen? Um, like sheep, all of us have gone astray. Mm -hmm. Typically, a shepherd, besides protection, they have focus or direction, a goal. They're trying to lead the cattle to this, whether to this pasture, yes. mm -hmm. this well, whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So when you strike the shepherd, you have strike the focus, the goal. Mm -hmm. And why you see you see the dispersion? Because most sheep do not have goals. They don't have focus. They don't have a main goal. So yeah. they just fall, fall, fall aside. When a person have a major goal, they don't. But Jesus in his mercy, like you read in 28, he said, I know all of you will, you know, uh, without me to focus, you will lose your focus. Mm -hmm. But I will rise and I'll go ahead. I will re-establish the focus right. again. Yes. We thank God for that. Because yes. Jesus rise, we will be all without focus. Right. And the same focus that he was driving before he died, mm -hmm. now rise again and driving it, we the church must make sure we are maintaining that focus. Right. And thank God for the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is there to make sure we maintain yes. that focus. focus. Right. Amen. 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 It's very true. And notice it says this night. 
the mm -hmm. testing of the focus is in the night, yeah. mm -hmm. in the darkness. Mm -hmm. In the light, everyone can see the goal. Mm -hmm. In the night, when, when the goal is not before you, when, the, when there's no one to encourage you, to, to right. help you, mm -hmm. will you still focus? Will right. you still move towards the goal in the night? Perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. The testing is in the night time, it's not in the day. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. So verse 16, it says, And when the Sabbath was passed, that is, after the sun had set, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Shalom, purchased sweet-smelling spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. Now, there is two women, right? Okay? After he died, he was crucified and he was died up and he was buried, buried, put into the tomb, told the tomb is sealed. Okay? We all know when someone died and they go into the tomb, it is sealed off. There is no re-entering back into it. Amen? Unless you are willing to break the seal or remove the stone to go in there. But what you're going to meet is like smelly corpse. Okay? Depending on how many days it was in there. So these two women are on a journey now. They want to go and anoint the Lord's body. Right? So they start up on this journey. Okay? And they're on the way. Verse 2. Um, verse 2 now said. And very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. So... After the Sabbath day has passed, the first day of the week, they came to the tomb, which potentially be the third day. By then, the sun had risen, and they said to one another, Who will roll back the stone for us out of the groove across the floor at the door of the tomb? So, you're on a journey. You got to the tomb now, so you have no idea to how you're going to get past that big boulder that is sealing the tomb up. So they're talking to themselves and saying this question, right? And when they look up, they distinctly saw that the stone was already rolled back, for it was very large. So when they got to this tomb now, it's open. The stone is already rolled back and it's open. Okay? So they must be in amazement. Right? Because prior to them arriving at the tomb, they are asking themselves a question who is going to remove it? Right? Amen. Verse 5. And going into the tomb, they saw a young man sitting there on the right side, clothing in long, stately, sweeping robe of white. And they were utterly amazed and struck with terror. So, you arrive at the tomb where the Lord was buried in. It's open. Now, you are in probably in an awesome struck for what happened. So when you arrive, you look into it, you see someone beside the Lord is sitting there. Okay? So now, all of a sudden, your state of consciousness is going to change. Because you are now wondering what is going on. Okay? Not knowing that the Lord has already been risen from the dead. Amen? Verse 6. And he said to them, Do not be amazed and terrified. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. So there is one of God's messenger, an angel, who is just sitting there waiting. And you know, when these two women arrive, he's saying to them, do not be terrified to what you are seeing because the Lord is risen. Amen? So the Lord has been removed from the lower position, which is death, and he's now moved to the higher position, which is the resurrected life. Amen? He said, he is not here. See the place where they laid him. But be going Tell the disciple and Peter, he goes before you into Galilee. So here is the same very angel now, is now re-announcing what God, Amen. what Perfect. Christ had originally told them yep. in Mark 17 verse 28. Right? Here now he's saying it to these two women, both Mary and Magdalene. He's saying to these women, go and tell, he said, include his and Peter. He goes before you into Galilee. You will see him there. Just as he has told you. 
This is confirmation now. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Right? Yeah. But let's read on to see what's going to happen now. Verse 8. Then they went out and fled from the tomb for trembling and bewilderment. So when they left the tomb now, they, their state, their whole state of, um, of consciousness is in a very perplexed and confused manner. Because you went to a tomb with an expectation that the Lord is still going to be there. Yeah. Now when you got to a tomb, it's open, someone else is sitting there, there's no Lord to be seen or to be found in that tomb, yeah. right? Then you have the messenger down, now telling you what the Lord has already prophesied ahead of time. And he said, go now and tell your brethren, which is the rest of the disciples, and Peter, that he has risen and he's going to meet you in Galilee. You will see him there. The past hasn't changed. No. <laughs> it's still the same. Yeah, exactly. What <laughs> yes. I was doing with you before, <laughs> yes. I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it. Right. Yeah. I'm just having an angel now confirm it. Right. So now well, I'm in the state of shock. They're in the state of shock. Yeah. Trembling and confused. Right? Return him back to the disciple to inform them, right? Yeah. So let's see what he says, right? He, you know, Nikki, there was one time I went to, to my car and my car was gone. And, and I was like, what happened? And I started to feel anxiety and everything. Yes! <laughs> and then I realized, oh, I didn't take my car. <laughs> so, so now that's just from losing my car. Mm -hmm. Now imagine anointing back in those days was mm -hmm. to stop the smell. Mm -hmm. But it was also a sign of love. It was them musing over him. Because yes. I love you so much, I don't want you to smell. You know what I mean? Yes. Now imagine your loved one is not there. It's like imagine you come and your child is not there. Yeah. You're like, you start to freak out. Yes. Like imagine if Nessa turns around, Daniel is gone. Mm -hmm. She's like, what? Mm -hmm. what? What am I going to tell Debbie? What, yeah. what? Yeah. I, I love yeah. this kid. Yeah. Right. Now imagine how much more so Jesus. Where's our Lord? Mm -hmm. They start to feel perplexed. Yeah, a little anxious. And anxiety you know, kicks in. Yeah. Yes. Whenever, you, whenever you misplace or lose something valuable, you feel a little messed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. How much more so the Lord? Exactly. So yes, yeah, so these two women, they took off and they fled from the tomb, right? Yeah. And feeling perplexed, confused, and anxiety kicks in. Okay? Trying to get to where the others is to tell them what the angel has said. That the Lord has risen. Amen. Amen? Here's a test of faith now is going to come in. Whether they believe what the Lord has originally told them in the beginning, and now here is the message from a messenger, one of the Lord's servants, come and said, He has risen. It's all do, part of the plan. Do you believe that He has risen? It's all part of the plan. Amen? Yep. And so here we go. Bewilderment and consternation, which means anxiety, had seized them. And they said nothing about it to anyone, for they were held by alarm and fear. Mm -hmm. Amen? So of course, you know, in, in, in when you are encountered with something like that, yes, you're not in your right mind. Your mind is no. not in, you're not in the right state of mind. Yeah. Right? I mean, Jesus tried to prepare them. Yes. Because he told them, but they didn't believe. <laughs> they didn't believe. You know? So they're on their way back, and you can imagine what they were feeling in the inside, and you know, yeah. the whole outward expression to what the, from what the angel had told them, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So verse 9 says, Now uh -huh. Jesus had uh -huh. risen uh -huh. from death early on the first day of the week, appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had driven out seven demons. Mm -hmm. So the first appearance was Mary that encountered the Lord. Yeah. In the new resurrected life, he appeared mm -hmm. to her first, Amen. right? She went and reported it to those who had been with him as they grieved and wept. So when she go back to the rest of the brethren, she found them in a sorrowful state. They were still in that mourning state. <laughs> they haven't recollected themselves. It's they called disbelief. <laughs> yes, they haven't really come in to, uh, into remembrance of what he had told them from Mark 28. He said, when I rise, I will meet you in Galilee. And I know that the word of God gets specific. On the third day, yep. I will rise. Yep. So this really opened up, and this happens in our everyday life. You know, the Lord 
will speak to us about a situation or an area in our life. Yeah. Right? He will announce it to us. Yeah. But then we just go on as if yeah. it was Sheeps. never happened. Sheeps. But the Very most right. Christian, this mm -hmm. is why the Lord left with it. And people in general, mm -hmm. they live without definitive goal or purpose. Yes. Like if they don't have a place to be or a time or a thing or a subject. Mm -hmm. They're very forgetful. Yes. You just go on as if it will never yep. happen. And, and whether they show up or not, Jesus is at Galilee and he's going to wait for them. Mm -hmm. He's like, the prophecy ain't changing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be here for, at you for Galilee. I'm waiting for you to come to right. Galilee. Yes. And, and it's the same with us. We get up, and God is still waiting at the last place he told us he was going to be. Mm -hmm. And we are... We're going everywhere but the place he said to be. Yes. And when you go back to him, he's like, go to Galilee. Yes. <laughs> my plan has to change. Right. <laughs> and you know, and this really pierced my heart. Hmm. Because as I was, like I said, this morning I was going over it, you know. You know, the Lord grant me grace to sit still. This really pierced my heart. Because when I look at myself, I can only use it myself as an example and speak about myself. So when I look at myself, right, and I try to remember all the things that the Lord says, this will happen in your life. This is what's going to happen to the body of Christ. Why is it sometimes I still sense a bit of distrust happening inside me? Why is it I still sense that? That the life that I'm supposed to be living now is supposed to be the higher life. I'm supposed to be experiences the fullness and the richness of the life giving spirit. I am no longer of the old. Right? But I am not experiencing this, Lord. Is there any unbelief still left within me? That I cannot lay hold of this life mm. fully of it. It's there. Yep. It doesn't need to be done. It is already Finish, it's completed. So this question came to me. And even uh, on my way here, and I was talking to Bishop Fritz, and I asked him, I said, is this church still in unbelief of what is already done? Yeah. Because if the church wasn't in unbelief of what is already done, the church would be powerful right now. Amen. Our everyday life and situation wouldn't handle us anymore. Perfect. Sin won't have the opportunity to knock on our door anymore. We won't be in such of a turmoil when it comes to our marriage and our finances and our relationship with people, things, and situation. We will be doing all the miraculous things that God said that he, we should be doing, like healing the sick, raising the dead, preaching to the gospel to every single human upon the face of the earth. Growing from grace to grace, strength to strength, faith to faith. We will not be shipwrecked. Mm. In other words, our faith is wrecked. So uh, this question came to me. Is the church still in unbelief at this very stage and present time? We are the church. So if we want to do introspection, we have to do it under his light to see. Paul said, I will not be counted as a counterfeit. Mm. So none of us should even, while we look, do introspection under God, we, we got to Lord, we do not want to be counterfeit. Do I still have unbelief within me that the very thing that you said is not happening? Yep. That's why that man cried, help me with my unbelief. Mm -hmm. That when I desire to do good, Evil always present itself. Then I see where am I standing. The position where I'm standing is still in Roman 7. The very question came, and the same question I posed to the church today. Those who are here, those who are watching. Are you still in unbelief? Now the Lord told the disciple in Mark 14, 28, but, but after I am raised to life, I will go before you into Galilee. 
So when they received the message now from both Mary, why did they not believe? Why? It was foretold already. And this is the same way with our lives. These things are already foretold. Amen. Anytime there's a prophecy over life, you are going to be this, you are going to be that. This is what's going to happen. Why don't you believe? You know, let's continue. Hardness of heart. Yes, verse 11 of Mark 16. It is the human experience. When God tells Abraham, He's going to have a child. You remember what Abraham did? Yes. He laughed. <laughs> and he goes, can a man, 99 years mm -hmm. old, still have children and fear? And my wife, I keep it 90. Mm -hmm. And my wife, 80 years old, bear children? Yes. Yeah. So he laughed first. Then when Sarah here, she uh. laughed also. And then denied it. <laughs> exactly. And then he didn't deny it. He just laughed. Yes. <laughs> but Sarah, and then she lied to the Lord in front of him. Yeah. Like, Lord, I didn't, I didn't laugh. He goes, yes, you did. Yeah, the human experience... He, ch he changed your name to laughter. You know that? Yeah. <laughs> Sarah's laughter. Or Sunday. Okay, that's yeah. right. Um, the, the human experience, mm -hmm. their faith is not very built very strong. It's fickle. Mm -hmm. It's fickle. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's a fickle part. It's mm -hmm. simple as that. They'll believe one moment. The next moment, yep, they won't believe. Mm -hmm. When Jesus is around, they're like... Absolutely, Lord. Anything. I'll die for you. Right. <laughs> the minute he goes, he's like, I'm running for my life, man. <laughs> right. That fear kicks in. Yeah. That human instinct, that human, the lower nature instinct, when that kicks in, yeah. that's what happens. Fear is the destroyer of faith. Yes. yes, that's what happens. You know? So the Lord pierced my heart this morning. He's saying you have the life. The reason why you, you're still battling the weakness and the sickness. Yeah. You gotta believe. And once I believe, then my trust will flow in that area. Amen. Then my faith now is anchored in it. Amen. And I'm just waiting for the full now manifestation of it to happen. I'm no longer worrying. I'm no longer acting as if it needs to be done again. So this exposes the state of the church. How come you're not hearing the church is rising up in power and strength? How come you're not hearing many people are being healed? How come you're not hearing people are raising the dead? How come you're not hearing man is walking on water? Christ said that you will do more than he. He said, I have given you the very thing that you need in order for it to be done. So what's going on? Mm. Judge a fruit, judge a tree by its fruit, Nikki. So every time I walk on the street, why is it? There's not an open door open for me to preach the gospel to, to someone. If I'm in the company of a group of people, why is it? There's not an opportunity opening up for me to preach the good news tidings to them. He said it must be preached right across the earth. Every human race must know the gospel. If they don't know it to the extent, at least here is it. limits what he can do. So this is the problem. And this is what he wants to expose to the church. You can't say that you do not, you are not equipped. You cannot say you are not equipped. We are equipped. But it's a lack of our belief and distrust. Our faith has not matured on mustard seed yet. Mm. It's sad, but many kids true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're still like children that you got a spoon fed. Amen. Too 
Let the testing come here undone. Mm -hmm. Yep. Be scattered. Yep. When we are faced with a crisis, we fall apart. Mm -hmm. Just what the disciple did in the beginning. When he got arrested, they fall apart. Peter draw out his sword and strike. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't, couldn't keep their composure. It was chaos. There were no peace. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, verse, verse 11. Yes. And when they heard that he was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe. He raised Lazarus from the dead. That's, so he can't raise from the dead? <laughs> There's just no excuse other than we're just fickle. Hmm. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that when um, Christ said to the people, he said, all you believe in is signs and wonders. All you want to see is signs and wonders. If you don't see it, you don't believe it. He hmm. called them, I forgot the name, that he called, a perverse generation. Hmm. Yeah. And the only sign you're going to get is Noah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So if we don't see it before our eyes, we don't believe it. That's it right there. Because we are pretty much identifying with the lower nature, with the flesh. Everything is of physical, nothing is of the spirit. Signs, wonders, miracles don't necessarily make you believe. The Israelites had cut on them, they didn't believe. No. <laughs> it, it, it's a heart thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not a miracle thing. So they didn't believe. She came to them. She said they had.